from the coronary sinus in the back. What's coming in? The preload. What's going to the heart? If, if more is going in, you got to do something about it. It can change stroke volume. Contractility. How much is your heartbeat? How, how good the muscles working? How well it's firing? How well the cells are? You're not having a heart attack? How good your myocardium is working? How well it's contracting? Contractility. And then three. The afterload. Afterload is kind of weird. I wrote the definition from the book because I just didn't understand it right away when I first saw it. Pressure in the arteries above the similar valves. So in other words, pressure in the aorta, pressure in the pulmonary arteries. So how much comes back through the similar linear valve before they close? Pressure in the arteries above the similar valves that oppose the opening of the valve. So if this is your aorta, going back to the heart, how much pressure is in there that oppose that valve, the opening of that. Because it's trying to open from pressure here, right? That's what's trying to open it from the ventricle. The pressure trying to close it is coming from up here. So that is the afterload. How much is in the pulmonary artery and the aorta after the heart beats? That's afterload. Makes sense, right? It, that can't open if this pressure is humongous. If your blood pressure is one, 130 over 90, your valves are going to have, that's why my blood pressure is bad, it's going to have a hard time pushing that over. It's going to be almost impossible. If it's 100, you're going to pop dead, you're going to explode something. Because your ventricles going to push as hard as you can, and you can't get it open. That's afterload. These three things, fool with that, mess with it, uh, alter it, the stroke line. That's the stroke All right. One more thing, we're through with heart. And we can start. There's a, they talk in the book about this Frank Starling guy. And I figured if he was important enough to get his name, then sometime it, I learned it was Frank Starling's Law of the Heart. It's a pretty simple thing, but it makes a lot of sense. The Frank Starling law of the heart is the ventricles eject as much blood as they receive. So if they receive 60 milliliters, they eject 60 milliliters. If they receive 70, they want to eject 70. And so what that says, if more comes, that means the ventricle is normally this big. If it receives enough to stretch it out that big, it's going to contract harder and eject it all. This is what causes the heart to actually contract a little harder. Remember that most of the time it's this versus this for, for stroke volume, for the amount of cardiac output. But if I fill the ventricle that big, it's going to push out that big. If I stretch it out because of whatever's happening, and it stretches out more because of more blood coming back to it, it's going to contract and try to push out everything. That's that guy's law. It tries to eject what it can receive. If it receives more, it tries to eject. The only way it can eject more is to push hard. So it increases contractility of the heart. All right, that's it on the heart. Let's take 15 minutes.